I'm very happy today to be talking to Professor Peter Misola. He's the Minister of Communications and Science and Technology for Tanzania. Uh, first of all, Professor Misola, could you just give us some idea of uh, uh, what the situation with telecoms is in Tanzania? Do you have any special issues you need to deal with there? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I would like to tell you that back in the early 1990s, Tanzania, like just many other African countries, was in a situation where the ICT sector was under the state monopoly. However, having realized that uh, the government alone had no adequate resources to develop the basic infrastructure and network to provide information and the communication services to the people, the government decided to liberalize the telecommunication sector so as to provide these services as to many people as possible and reaching the very remote areas of the country. The government is in an effort right now to try and uh, develop the telecommunication sector using the operators and the government itself by putting up an ICT backbone infrastructure which will cover all the 133 district headquarters countrywide, including Tanzania mainland and uh, the islands of Zanzibar and Pemba, uh, so that uh, we can reach these headquarters and thereafter have a last mile connection to the villages using the universal, connect, uh, universal access fund so that uh, we can get to all the schools all the medical centers so that ultimately we have an e-government, telemedicine, e-education, industry. Basically the intention is to have an integrated ICT-led social economic development in the country. Tanzania is a, is a vast country, large expanses, uh, um, large area. This presents you with a a very big challenge, doesn't it? You are quite right. Tanzania is a vast country with a total area size of 942 thousand square kilometers with a population of uh, approximately 40 million people. Indeed, it is a challenge and that's why for a long time we would like to satellite uh, telecommunication, but now with this optic fiber which we are in the process of laying down, I'm sure we'll be able to reach all those areas. At the moment, we have um, about 13.5 million subscribers, as compared to only 2 million people, subscribers, in 2004. And the tele has uh, improved from 4% in 2004 to 32% today. That's extraordinary. So we are optimistic that uh, we are moving in the right direction, although it is taking a bit of time. How do people use ICTs in Africa? I imagine levels of, of illiteracy are quite high, uh, in which case mobile phones might be a more popular option than, um, than, than computers. Is this just my prejudice or is, is, is this... I think your observation is true, that to a large extent ICTs are used for uh, telephones, for communications, uh, typing in offices and things of that nature. But slowly, a lot more people through the use of telecenters, which are being established in many areas, rural areas, a lot more people are getting interested to learning the use of computers. We have restrictions, we have constraints. Power supply in most of the rural areas is a problem. Even if we wanted to use um, the solar power, the initial infrastructure for solar power may be prohibitive to most ordinary people. But uh, slowly, I think, uh, with the laying down of the ICT optic fiber, I'm sure that you get to as many people as possible. And uh, our efforts right now is to introduce ICTs in schools. And uh, the model of the small computers that I've seen here at this conference I think that is very, very encouraging indeed.